Hello, my name is Patricia Fisher, and I'm the principal percussionist of the Livonia Symphony, the Rochester Symphony, and the Motor City Brass Band, all in the heart of Michigan. This is a continuation of various videos that we're making to demonstrate various percussion instruments from orchestra and concert band. This is not an advanced demonstration. This demonstration is meant for elementary school, middle school people, scouts trying to get a music merit badge, or people who just wanted to know a little bit more about percussion in orchestra and concert band. As I said in a previous video, I like to categorize percussion instruments into three different areas. Membranophones, or things with skins. Metallophones, things made out of metal. And then the instruments made out of wood. This video is going to cover the basics of instruments made out of wood. And not drum shell wood, but actual instruments made out of wood. So here we go. The first instrument I want to cover is the wood block. As I said in another video, if you take care of your machines, they will take care of you. Wood blocks actually made out of wood don't really have any moving parts to them. But you got to take care of them nonetheless, because if they crack, they don't sound good anymore. So what do I mean by that? So you might see in music wood block with stick, like snare drum stick. Now it's usually okay if you don't play it really hard to play a wood block with a wood stick, but you can't really bang on it because if you crack the wood block, it doesn't sound good anymore. So what if you want to use another kind of mallet or stick? So there's a lot of round mallets and sticks out there. Some of them are made out of really hard plastic that you would normally play with bells. I don't want you to use those really hard plastic mallets on something like a wood block. These are all various hardnesses or thicknesses of rubber. Let's see what these sound like. So this gray one is the hardest one I have. And it's a Encore gray. And I wrap some electrical tape around it. Actually, it's this electrical rubberized tape around it to take some of the edge off. This is what this sounds like. That's pretty loud. I'm not really playing loud and I can really hear that. Then we have red, ru red rubber. Again, an Encore mallet. Not wrapped with anything. Sounds like this. A little bit louder. I'm not really playing it any harder than the gray ones. And then finally I have these kind of soft, again, Encore mallet, blue mallets. Now that's a real difference in sound because these mallets are much softer than I thought they were. So I would probably go with the gray ones or the red ones. I would not use a metal mallet. I would not use a hard plastic mallet. Wood blocks come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. This one's made out of hard rock maple from Fall Creek. This one is made out of mahogany. Let's see what this one sounds like. Here's the hard red rubber mallet. Much lower pitch. Now here's a soft blue mallet that didn't exactly sound real good on that maple wood block, but let's see what it sounds like on this mahogany one. That actually sounds pretty good. This mahogany would be easier to crack, it's bigger, and the wood is slightly softer. So if you're in middle school or elementary school band, you might not have wood blocks that are actually made out of wood. You might have wood blocks that are made out of a synthetic material. We kind of call this plastic, but it's not 100% plastic. It's a, a synthetic material that the percussion companies have come up with so that they can make wood blocks, instruments that sound like wood blocks, but that don't crack very easily. So like I said, the regular wood ones would crack really easily. These plastic ones wouldn't, but I would not use a hard plastic mallet or a metal mallet on these ones either. That's with a wood stick. That sounds pretty good. Let's see what this one sounds like when I use the gray mallet. See how that still sounds like a wood block? But it's, it's made out of this plastic material and it has a mounting device on it so you can mount it on a stand or a drum set or you can mount it, say if you want a uh, marching DCI style marching band, you can mount it on marimba stands or something like that and use it outside. And that travels pretty good so you could hear it really good outside. Now these things also come in various sizes. This one is a piccolo one. 
This one is from Pearl. The blue one is from LP, and they call this a piccolo woodblock. Now, see how much higher pitch that is? High pitch, but made out of plastic. So if you use it in marching band or if you use it in elementary or middle school, it's less likely to get damaged. So what other kind of wood instruments do we have in an orchestra? Well, another specific wood instrument that you'll hear a lot in orchestra, I'm just going to go over here and grab them, are the castanets. Now, a lot of orchestral music brings castanets in to add a Spanish flavor to the music. And they sound sort of like this. Now, if you're familiar with Nutcracker, and if you like are doing ballet or anything like that as an elementary or middle school person, you might be very familiar with Nutcracker. These are used in the dance of the chocolate in the second movement or the second half of the Nutcracker. Now, these happen to be made out of a specific kind of hardwood. Sometimes they're made out of ebony. This is a special set that you might see in some schools if they've had a, a percussion equipment that's been holded over, held over for many decades now. And these were mainly put together not to be played like this, but as rolls. So you can get really loud rolls out of them. So you would do something like this. Or you might do something like this. See how that sounds like a castanet roll? So remember that originally, castanets were held in the hand by Spanish dancers. You might, you might see them holding the hand like this, and they'd be tight and real tight, so they spring open a little bit. And then the, the dancer would play them like this as they danced. So that's what these instruments allow us to do in orchestra, but mounted on sticks, they make them a little bit or handles really, they make them a little bit easier to control and handle in an orchestra situation. So what other kind of instruments might you see in an orchestra that are generally made out of wood? Well, here's another really good one from the Nutcracker. This is a ratchet. This is used in the first and second half of Nutcracker. Uh, the outside of this is metal, the frame is metal, but if you can see on the inside, the wheel with the notches, and the, I don't know what you would call these, the, the flaps, I guess, are made out of wood. In fact, you can see on this one, this one's cracked a little bit on the end then. And it sounds like this. That's a ratchet. Now, this one is with the metal um, frame. You can use it to mount it on a bass drum. That's what this little mounting device does here. You can mount it onto things. So if you have one hand doing something else, you can reach over and crank it with the other hand. Here is a ratchet made totally out of wood. The notches are made out of wood, the handle's made out of wood, the frame's made out of wood, and the one slat is made out of a big chunk of wood. And it sounds something like this. It's got a very different darker sound than the one I just played, and it's also way louder. So. At times when you need to have something really loud in an orchestra, you can use this. And that's loud. Wow. So let's see what else we have in an orchestra that we might use that's made out of wood. Here are the temple blocks. There's five of them. They're different sizes. They're sort of like wood blocks because they're made totally out of wood. This particular set is made out of, is, is cut out of different shapes and different planks of wood than a wood block is. This wood block is a solid piece of wood, and they've carved a notch in it. This is not a solid piece of wood. These pieces of wood have been all been glued together, and they're laminated on the sides. So this is pretty big. I may not be able to hold this up while I play it, but let me see if I can. So I'm going to go use my gray mallets first, and let's see how this sounds. Super heavy, i got to tell you, super heavy. Let's see what it sounds like with the blue mallets. You would hear this a lot in concert music, orchestra music. And if you're in your high school, your middle school, or your elementary school, and you see 
round red kind of balls of wood with notches cut in the middle that are hollowed out. Those are the old style of temple blocks. And actually those are collector's items now. So if your school has anything like that, keep them locked up because they're worth a lot of money. So what other kind of wood instruments would you see in an orchestra? I've covered the real basic ones, but as I said in um, all the other videos that I've, I'm doing, one of the cool things about being a percussionist is that we get to play a lot of instruments from other countries, other ethnicities, and other cultures. So let's take a look at some of those, okay? So let's go with Latin American. So one of the main things you'll see in an orchestra that is from Latin America are claves. These are basically solid pieces of rosewood, and that's really all they are. And you hear this a lot in Latin music. In fact, um, George Gershwin wrote a whole bunch of music, like the Cuban Overture, where you hear these throughout the Cuban Overture. They sound like this. Now, I bet you've heard that in all sorts of music, big band music, rock music, Santana, and now classical music as well. Now, there's a whole uh, tradition and way of playing these instruments, especially from Latin America, that you kind of have to learn if you're going to be an authentic player. But these are just the basic, I'm just doing a basic demonstration here, so we're not going to go into that now. The cool thing is, is you can go on the internet and see all these instruments played by very good people. But if you do surf the internet, surf it safely and let your parents know that you're doing it so they can keep an eye out for you, okay? So what other kind of Latin American instruments do we have? Well, of course, one of the big things you get from Latin America are various kinds of shakers. Now here's a shaker made entirely out of wood. It's a box of wood filled with I'm not sure what because I'm not gonna take it apart to see. Sounds pretty cool, huh? Now there's a whole variety of shakers that you can get out of Latin music. For instance, and there's varieties based on every country too. So like these are maracas carved out of wood. Then we also have and I only have one right now, is a maraca where the handle is wood, but the actual bulb area that contains whatever's inside the shaker is actually made out of leather. Now this goes back to the skins video that I did, um, talking about how drum heads were made out of some kind of hide. I'm guessing this is a version of cowhide that has been sewn together to create the bulb on the maraca and then tacked, as you can see, there's metal tacks here, tacked into a wood handle. Sounds like this. Still has a maraca sound to it, but it's much darker. So again, in your middle school, elementary school, high school band, you may not have maracas made out of wood or maracas made out of leather, but you might have various kinds of shakers made out of plastic. For instance, this is a lemon shaker made out of plastic. Kind of, sort of sounds like this. Just a slightly different sound. You might have a tube shaker made out of plastic. You might even have a metal shaker made out of metal, obviously. Now the nice thing about this shaker is that it also has a couple rust sides to it, so you can use it as a guiro as well. We'll get to that one in a minute. Or you might have actual plastic maracas. That's the kind of stuff you might find in your school. They all come from the same place of Latin music. So as I said, I was also going to show you some gueros. Here's a guero that I got from a friend of mine. Let me get the guero stick out of here. This one was actually made in Mexico, and he picked it up on a holiday. But just because he picked it up on a holiday doesn't mean it doesn't sound good. And notice 
This particular one has notches for my finger and then another notch for my thumb. Sometimes you get them and they don't have notches at all. Sometimes they have two thumb notches, but you got to try to stick one finger and one thumb in there. And the guiro sounds like this. Very different sound than a shaker, but it still comes from the Latin America uh, culture, ethnicity music. Or you might see people play it sort of like this. Now here's another one that is just a piece of wood that's been carved out in the middle and then has notches in it. I'm not exactly sure where this one came from. I'm thinking it may have come from somewhere in South America. And it sounds like this. Or maybe. Still a good sound. Slightly different than the other one. Now let's see what it sounds like when I do it with the metal one here. Now this is on the side with the really small grooves. Now let's try the side with the really large grooves. Surprisingly, the large grooves are not as loud as the smaller grooves. So what other kind of wood instruments might you see used in an orchestra? Well, nowadays we're also doing a lot of instruments or a lot of music that, that comes out of uh, Africa and places like that. So you might see a whole bunch of instruments like that. For instance, this kashiki. This is a very large one. This is both found in South America and can be found in Africa as well. And this one isn't exactly made out of wood but it's made out of material that ends up drying so hard that it feels and sounds like wood. So this is wicker basket on the outside, and down here on the bottom is a dried out gourd, which basically is like a squash or an acorn that they carved out and then let sit and dry. But it makes this kind of really hard, let me see if I can show you how hard it is, this kind of really hard shell-like material. See how hard that is? So that when you shake it, you can shake it with the wicker, or you can see how much louder it is when the, the beads are hitting that dried out board. And there are also instruments made entirely out of gourd. For instance, here's a, a, a shaker that comes can come from both Latin America and Africa. Now this one definitely looks like a dried out vegetable. I'm not sure what vegetable it is. See, there's a cut hole in there and they let it dry out and they kind of put stuff in there and scraped it out and dried it out some more and put stuff, something down in there to scrape it out. Because you can see that this part here doesn't have a hole. That part does. And then they wrap beads around it. So you can get a sound like this out of it. Or you can get a sound like this out of it. That's a kind of cool sound, but that comes from South America and Africa. And then finally, there is the vibra slap. Almost finally, I've got one more after this. The vibra slap. Now the vibra slap was made as a replacement for a donkey's jawbone that's been laid out and dried in the sun and the teeth all get loose in the, in the jawbone. Now, I don't have one of those, they're very hard to find, but go out on the internet, again, sa surf safely, go out on the internet and find people playing that. It's actually literally the jawbone of a donkey with the teeth loose and they hit the edge of it and it makes this buzzing sound. This was designed by a company to emulate that buzzing sound. And you've probably heard this in pop music and rock music, especially from the 60s and the 70s. It sounds like this. I know you've heard that before. We get a call in the orchestra a lot to play that, especially when we're playing pop music. Then the final instrument I want to show you, this is really the final instrument, 
is another instrument that comes from South America. This is a rain tree. Now this is one that was designed and modernized by Latin percussion. So it's a wood shell with little pins all inside the wood shell. And I believe it's little tiny plastic balls inside here. And when you turn it upside down, it sounds like rainfall, like this. Now I can make a gentle rain or I can make a downpour. There's a the gentle rain again, more downpour. This is used a lot as sound effects. And when I do it like this, it stops. So that's just some of the various kinds of instruments made out of wood and wood-like products that we use in an orchestra. There's a whole bunch more that I didn't even get a chance to cover, but I hope that gives you an idea. Make sure you treat your wood blocks properly. Thank you very much for joining me on this video. Uh, thank you to the Livonia Symphony for sponsoring the video. Keep playing and keep practicing, and bye for now.